It's 11.29. Okay, we're going to talk now uh, to John Hughes. Uh, he came to Spain uh, just over two years ago because of illness and to access legal cannabis. He was able in a very short time to reduce his dependency of very strong and addictive uh, painkillers and other drugs for his medical problems. Interesting story, and we welcome John Hughes now to Let's Talk. Good morning, John. Thank you for joining us. Good morning, Bill. Thank you. Right, let's start back at the beginning here. Um, you very sadly broke your spine in an accident when back in the UK. Uh, yeah, well, I was in Spain, actually. When, oh, I, was about, blimey. when I was about, when I was in my mid-twenties. But yeah, uh, all the work was done in the UK. Right. Uh, and uh, obviously an incredibly serious injury. Um, you uh, were in constant pain and on what you describe as bags of medications. Yeah, literally. Uh, once a week, I'd come out of boots with a great big bag of medication, and that would be my week supply. And it was a regular thing. I was, I was, you know, it was quite a lot of drugs. And what were the effects of those drugs? I mean, any drugs have side effects, but heroic amounts of drugs like that, I imagine, had heroic amounts of side effects. Uh, yeah, absolutely. I, I, put, I put on absolutely massive amounts of weight. Um, I, I actually went up to twenty-eight stone at one point. Wow. Okay. Um, and yeah, uh, just uh, all the other side. I mean, the IBS had kicked in. Right. Um, my my liver was in constant pain because it was trying to process all of these drugs. Yeah, I, I was on far too many drugs for 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 just one body. Yeah, and you describe as uh, having had no life. Uh, it, uh, what do you mean by that? Uh, I was I was bed bound. Uh, right. The medication um, after many years had, had just become pointless. They, they were ma basically I was using them to just not need them. <laughs> so mm. I, I had to take them. I was addicted to them. There was no choice. I, I, so I was back to square one, but an addict. So you did what any curious person would do. You looked into alternatives and one of those alternatives was uh, cannabis. And you tried to grow a few cannabis plants to help your health. Um, but that didn't work out because of the illegality of it. Yeah, unfortunately, um, cannabis is still a Schedule Two drug in, in the UK, and um, many people suffer because of that. Um, a lot of people have come over to Spain because of that. Um, but yeah, um, I had a few plants, and the police decided that uh, that wasn't wasn't acceptable, and they, they took them. I wasn't prosecuted. I, I wasn't I wasn't even given a caution. It was just confiscated. So that avenue having been closed off to you, you took option B and you mentioned there you, uh, after much research, you decided to move to Spain. Now, on the face of it, one would think that Spain's laws would be not that dissimilar to the UK's, but that couldn't actually be further from the truth where this is concerned. No, I mean, Spain are absolutely fantastic when it comes down to, to cannabis use. Not, uh, there is a big recreational use in Spain. Um, apparently, there's about 10% of Spanish people smoke cannabis. Right. This is a, quite a lot. Of, but there are, there are also over a million medical cannabis users, um, wow. all signed up with associations. Um, um, many people now talk to their doctors about cannabis, and, and doctors are actually starting to become more receptive to, to, to this alternative. Obviously, you looked into this. You didn't just get, you know, get on a plane and start taking cannabis. Um, no. What, what is the exact position then here in Spain uh, from your research? Um, my understanding of it. I mean, although it is still technically illegal, mm -hmm. um, there are provisions in the law to allow um, uh, people by association. You, you know, in Spain we have association laws. Yeah. Um, so, um, as an association, uh, a group of people can join together and in the privacy of their own home or the privacy of, of, a, uh, of a building uh, designed as an association, cannabis can be consumed and bought legally. Right. And when you got here, um, did you get in touch with other people who had done the same thing initially? Absolutely. Uh, that was one of the reasons why I came to Spain, because there was such a big medical um, community here. Um, and it was and it was far easier to access um, the, the right strains as in, in the UK. You're you're limited to the guy down the street and what he's growing. Whereas in Spain, you can actually go through these selections and find the right one for you. 
Mm. This is the important bit, uh, uh, and let's come to the kind of science of this, if we can, um, then, John, because obviously anybody who's who's um, experienced kind of recreational cannabis use, uh, and I certainly have with other people in, in my life, having spent a long time in the music business, I used to constantly watch people who would just hysterically giggle for most of the time I was talking to them and be particularly <laughs> useless at <laughs> coming up with anything much uh, else. Um that's because, obviously, um, cannabis contains a substance which is uh, psychoactive, uh, and that substance, to do the kind of science on this, is THC. Um, th there's another uh, substance in cannabis which is as important, and that's CBD. Uh, so you talk about um, cannabis for medical use is that simply what i'm used to seeing people spoke smoking spliffs or is it done in a very different way uh, it can be done smoking spliffs that is one way of doing it and i do occasionally well two or three times a day i'll go and sit in the sun and smoke a, a big spliff if especially if i'm in a lot of pain right. but i normally manage it with not doing it that way so um i process it into an oil yeah. So uh, and, and therefore, there, there's far less psychotropical effects. Right. Um, but but that is a that is a mild side effect of that drug. If you're taking it um, regularly, like any drug, that side effect soon wears off, and you only get that medical side. You only get the benefits. Yes, I'm fascinated that you say that when you came here, you were able to kind of pick and choose the one that worked best for you. So uh, is that a trial and error thing or is that in a kind of communication with other people that, that kind of cut, cut down all that effort for you? Yeah, well, of course. I mean, that's kind of what, we, what we're doing. It's a kind of a community. So I, I can talk to other people and say, well, what's worked best for you? And they, can, and they will tell me and I can try, and it might not work for me. But uh, uh, again, I find certain strains work really well for me and others don't. It's individual. Our bodies are all very, and it's also down to our other health problems, uh, what we eat, our lifestyles. Yeah. Yeah. You mentioned cannabis oil there, uh, and that's the, the, the thing that I've heard most commonly when people talk about using it for medicinal purposes. So what, A, what's the process involved in, in making it? Uh, and B, uh, what's the process involved in taking it? There are several types of cannabis oil, so we, we need to get... It. There are CBD um, cannabis oils, which you can buy legally in um, most grow shops in Spain. So, uh, chemists sell them. Um, the cannabis oil, the high THC, you can only get from, um, from cannabis clubs or if you make it yourself. And there are several ways of making it as well. There is a high um, THC where you extract it with a solvent, normally uh, an alcohol-based. Um, or there's a, a gentle, more gentle infusions where you add cannabis into an oil, you heat it up and you allow the, the, the fat from the oil to take the cannabis into itself. And then you strain it out and you take that. OK, so here, here we are with those acronyms again then, uh, THC and, and CBD. I've, I've had a couple of emails already about this. It's, it provokes a lot of interest. Um, uh, an email here which says, I take CBD oil four drops a day. I have um, psoriatic arthritis in my ankles, uh, including swollen tendons. Only that oil gives me total pain relief, swelling gone, amazing now Fantastic. that's cbd oil and you're saying that here in spain you can literally buy that over the counter yep yep um cbd oil um doesn't work for everyone um it, right. all, it all depends again down to the endocannabinoid system so I, I i genuinely ask people just go and do some research that's what you really need to it's all openly there available for people to go and see and you can you can go to uh, you can start with the CBD, and some people find it fantastic. Right, um, and it's also great for for children, for for things like epilepsy, um, autism. It, there's so many benefits from cannabis. It doesn't have to be just THC or CBD combinations of them all. And there are hundreds of cannabinoids, not just CBD or THC. There's THCA, CBDM. Oh, I see. CBD. There are hundreds. So just taking one. I personally wouldn't just take one. I'd want the entourage effect of them all. Right. Uh, another email here who says, um, I read that CBD can help with arthritis uh, and was wondering if this is the case, if I can use it as a general daily supplement, and if so, are there any side effects? And he's talking there particularly about CBD. Um, there are no side effects that I'm aware of with CBD. There's zero psychotropical effects. Um, it is very good for arthritis, um, 
especially uh, on the low levels of pain. Um, but again, it, it all depends on the individual person and how, how bad the pain is for them. They yeah. may need to start with CBD and maybe add a small amount of THC to, to that mix. Now, uh, now, obviously, what you're not suggesting here, John, uh, well, I'm assuming you're not suggesting, is that we kind of, you know, stagger around the street shouting, anyone got any cannabis, mate, um, uh, and sit, uh, sit at home with a kind of plethora of, of, of spliffs, trying them all uh, uh, no. to see whether they work. I mean, you probably feel very interesting after that experiment, but uh, it's maybe not the most scientific approach to it. It's, and it's not the best way. Smoking um, uh, is the, uh, the hardest way of, of taking the drug. Because and there would be presumably effects from the tobacco in that as well. Absolutely. So it's basically for non-smokers. It's, yeah. a, it's, a, it's, a, it's a no-brainer. So, but you can get um, oils, you can get um, vape oils, you can, you can make your own. I mean, I'm, I'm a person that says, make your own. Why buy it when you can make your own? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and if I was to turn up at a doctor then and say hello do in Spain and say hello doctor um I have um you know uh, arthritis early stages of arthritis or whatever it may be I'd like you to prescribe me uh, a, a, a cannabis uh, oil of some description would that happen in Spain? Not yet. No. Right. Uh, but it, it is soon and Murcia and Murcia um are poised um for the last 3 times it's gone into to the to the government here um they, they've already okayed it so it's just a process now um uh, catalonia they've already legalized it so you, if you're if you're in catalonia you can get it there anyway right but so that's quite an interesting dichotomy isn't it then so you can buy it in a pharmacy but you wouldn't get it prescribed to you by a doctor because there's uh, 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 to 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 how it is right now there is no medical benefits to cannabis ah right that's the, that's the legal world position on cannabis right now right that's very interesting uh, yet if one does research on it um uh, medical marijuana is used by uh, millions of people around the world to treat a number of conditions including alzheimer's appetite loss cancer crohn's disease anorexia glaucoma mental health conditions like ptsd and schizophrenia multiple cirrhosis muscle spasms nausea pain and wasting syndrome and that's just a few um it, it's almost too good to be true isn't it yeah it is and and maybe that's the reason why it's been kept illegal for so many years because it does such a good job one plant can replace so many pharmaceutical drugs so we go on to the grounds of why do pharmaceutical companies spend um, millions each year is trying to keep cannabis illegal. Mm, well, yeah, yeah, that's indeed a very interesting question, isn't it, John? Uh, and uh, if you've heard the show before, I, I'm certainly one of the protagonists of, uh, of, of uh, uh, anti-Big Pharma, I must confess. I have Bill. I have Bill, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, um, uh, so let's talk about your experience with it then. Um, there you are, you come to Spain, you start uh, getting your cannabis, and you, you before you get here, as we discovered, you, you had no life, you a massive weight gain you're constantly bedridden where are we now then john i am now woof, i'm 98 percent pain free wow so i'm not 100 percent pain free i'm 12 stone lighter i um i have four dogs they go for walks uh, running around i'm i have my life back which is great <laughs> absolutely extraordinary and you're not spending the day you know wandering around like something out of a cheech and chong album going hey man everything's really cool that's not happening right? sometimes, sometimes. <laughs> but it doesn't have to be bad the pain is no, no not at all. <laughs> it doesn't have to be now you started um a facebook page uh, didn't you uh, uh, about this and uh, obviously uh, people have flocked to the page to find out more about it yeah uh, just uh, by just talking to people and getting asked loads of questions. And it was, it was at one point, it became a daily job where, mm. where I'd be answering sort of 30, 40 messages saying, does this work? Can I do this? And I thought, well, what if I just put it into one little concise place where people can just go and ask questions and talk to each other, which was the best part. They can actually talk to each other um, and find out what's best for each other. Mm. So is this something now that you think that you're going to be on forever? Uh, uh, and given the fact that you really have no side effects from it, why wouldn't you? It's not doing you any harm. No harm whatsoever. I, I, I'm fitter now than I've ever been. Um, I, I do not want to go back to, to, to taking lots of pharmaceutical drugs. They, they really did make me ill. And they, 
they messed up my mental health as well. Yeah. That was the worst. But uh, I, I thought they were going to do me good and they didn't. And, and I'd relied on the doctors for many years to, to, to help me. And, yeah. and they'd stopped. They'd stopped helping me. They couldn't carry on. And, and, and that was, I felt abandoned. Have you had, since you started taking um, your, your cannabis, uh, a conversation with a doctor now, with your kind of newfound, uh, kind of, you know, your, 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 your thoughts about it? Have you actually sat down with a doctor and said, look, this is what's happened to me, and had a, a decent conversation with them? Or, or do they, they shut you down immediately and say, sorry, no, can't I, talk about I, it? I've, sp- I've spoken to several doctors about it. I mean, not about, I mean, my condition, but, but I, I feel um, healed. So I, I don't I haven't been to a doctor for over two and a half years, so I don't Amazing. need a doctor. Um, but the doctors that I have spoken to online and I have had many discussions about cannabis with, 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 with very clever people. Um, and, and they're all in agreement that we've we've got to at least find out whether it works or well. um, Madrid University, fantastic. Dr. Guzman and Dr. Miria Sanchez are one of the leading experts in, in the field of, of cannabis research. And and, and again, research them. They are just amazing people of course that the the flip side of this coin and the argument that would always be used i would guess um would be people who would say look marijuana can be addictive and it's considered to be a gateway drug to using other drugs and the higher the level of thc and the more often you use it the more likely you are to become dependent there are there are some truth to the to the addictive side of it um uh, prolonged use especially sm- uh, especially smoking because it is the the most yeah. psychotropical way of taking yes it can um it can lead to addiction um it's a it's more of a psychological addiction rather than a chemical addiction yes um with the with the fact that it's a cape brain drug i i i, I dismiss that yeah. um there were many studies proving that it's not a gateway drug um, and, it, and in fact is actually used as a as a, a dormant drug actually mm. uh, people, people go from smoking to drinking to smoking cannabis that if you if you go to the end of that scale so if you speak to any heroin addicts of course they've gone through all of these drugs too yeah yes so, so this is this is where people get the idea that it's a gateway drug actually more people smoke cannabis than they do take heroin so mm. Why are they not? Why are they not taking heroin too? Yeah, and to be and to be devil's advocate about it, if we're talking about addiction, then uh, you know, if you if you've been prescribed that's blood pressure pills or statins, yep. you're told that you're on them for oh. the rest of your days, uh, yep. <laughs> whether you like it or not. So you're, you're you're stuck with the addiction from the time that you're prescribed them. I mean, I, I was on a drug called tramadol, which yeah, I mean, people, fairly heavy I stuff. Think- and I think you can actually buy them over the counter in, in some pharmacies here. Yeah. Uh, which shocks me. Yeah. Um, and th- this is an opiate. This is, this is, this is heroin. Yeah. This is, and, and it's actually used by heroin addicts when they can't find heroin. Mm-hmm. It's, it's a fascinating story, John. Um, and, you know, nobody can deny the success story that you are describing to us. And anybody that doesn't believe you, well, that's entirely up to them. But it's not just you. No, they can go and find you know, out themselves. Yeah. Can, uh, 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 <laughs> what about this Facebook page then for people who maybe want to find a bit more and they're a bit scared, you know, because it does get, you know, if, you, if you're from, from a society like in the UK where you, you've kind of got this stigma and this kind of, you know, the police are going to knock on my door at any moment, have I got this right? Uh, they obviously want to find information uh, from people who've done it the correct way, if you like. So where do people find your Facebook page? All you have to do is Google Medical Cannabis Advice Spain. We, we will come up on the top of the search. Medical Cannabis Advice Spain. Uh, and that's a Facebook page, but not a website yet. Well, there is a website, but it, it's, it's more for, for, for just for, for people who can't find the Facebook page. Fantastic. So uh, that's all you need to Google. You'll find information there uh, and you'll find information from people who are actually using it as opposed to just Googling the words. Because, you know, when I'm doing the research for this, if you just Google medical cannabis, my God, you're there for the rest of your life. And, <laughs> uh, and, and, and really, there's people talking such nonsense. It, it, yeah, it's, it's really not. Bam- it is very bamboozling. And, and that's why I that's one of the reasons why the page is there to just make it quite simple, concise. So, uh, and, and then people can take the research themselves then. Yeah, fantastic. Well, it's been an absolute pleasure uh, talking to you this morning. It's 11.29.
Okay, we're going to talk now uh, to John Hughes. Uh, he came to Spain uh, just over two years ago because of illness and to access legal cannabis. He was able in a very short time to reduce his dependency of very strong and addictive uh, painkillers and other drugs for his medical problems. Interesting story, and we welcome John Hughes now to Let's Talk. Good morning, John. Thank you for joining us. Good morning, Bill. Thank you. Right, let's start back at the beginning here. Um, you very sadly broke your spine in an accident when back in the UK. Uh, yeah, well, I was in Spain, actually. Oh, fly me. When I was about, when I was in my mid-twenties. But yeah, uh, all the work was done in the UK. Right. Uh, and uh, obviously an incredibly serious injury. Um, you uh, were in constant pain and on what you describe as bags of medications. Yeah, literally uh, once a week I'd come out of boots with a great big bag of medication and that would be my week supply and it was a regular thing. I was, I was, you know, it was quite a lot of drugs. And what were the effects of those drugs? I mean, any drugs have side effects, but heroic amounts of drugs like that, I imagine, had heroic amounts of side effects. Yeah, absolutely. I, I, put, I put on absolutely massive amounts of weight. Um, I, I actually went up to 28 stone at one point. Wow. Okay. Um, and yeah, uh, just uh, all the other side. I mean, the, the IBS had kicked in. Right. Um, my, my liver was in constant pain because it was trying to process all of these drugs. Yeah. I, I was on far too many drugs for, for, for just one body. 